Welcome back to Arise 360. Now, the Black Lives Matter movement has been at the forefront of the fight for equality, police tr transparency, yeah. and justice for murdered African Americans at the hands of cops. Absolutely right. Joining us now is the co-founder of that movement and the author of the new book, When They Call You a Terrorist, Black Lives Matter Memoir. Patrice Kalor, welcome to Arise 360. Yeah, Thanks for having welcome. me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, we really appreciate all the work you have done for the Black Lives Matter movement mm. and for the injustices that we've been facing yes, in this country. Yes, indeed. So, mm, now, your book work. talks a lot about resilience and strength and survival. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the book and why you decided to write it. It's a coming-of-age story. It really is um, me trying to situate the conversation about anti-black racism mm. and, and talking to people about why this movement would even be created. I wanted people to understand that as a child, I witnessed state violence on a regular basis. Yes. I witnessed uh, policing and over-incarceration. And uh, it's what led, in a lot of ways, to the building of Black Lives Matter. Yes, wow. indeed. Okay, so for those people that are out there and they actually believe that the Black Lives Matter movement mm -hmm. is full of terrorists, mm -hmm. anti-cop people, mm -hmm. anti-white people, mm -hmm. what do you say to those people? I say that you're wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I say that um, if you take a moment to just look at the people who are actually leading Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. who are at the forefront of Black Lives Matter, we've always called for peace. Mm -hmm. We've always called for justice, especially for our family members, especially for the ones who've been killed by law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we are in America, of course, so everyone here knows what the Black Lives Matter movement is, but this is an international channel, so not everybody might be familiar mm -hmm. with it. Ta take me through why you started it and what it's about. Well, we started it when George Zimmerman was acquitted of Trayvon Martin's murder. Trayvon Martin was a young boy from Sanford, Florida, who was in his own neighborhood, went mm -hmm. to the store, get, got some Skittles and iced tea, and next thing you know, he's dead by a neighborhood watchman named George Zimmerman. That year was a whole trial from 2012 to 2013. I thought that George Zimmerman was going to get manslaughter at least, yes. mm -hmm. but he didn't. He got to go home yes. that night, and I, didn't, I couldn't live with the thought of that being the period to the story. And so I went on social media to kind of look at what else, what we were going to do, what was the call to action. And my good friend Alicia Garza wrote a love note to black people and she closed it with Black Lives Matter and I put a hashtag wow. on it. And when I put the hashtag on it, um, it was the first moment where I was like, this is something that could be bigger mm -hmm. um, than just the phrase. And we talked it out, her and I, and decided that we wanted to do something with it. And then Opal Temeti, a few days later, um, daughter of Nigerian immigrants, um, joined Black Lives Matter. And that's the story, the three of us started it. And we're now a global movement. We have over 40 chapters across the globe in the United States, United Kingdom, and in Canada. Yeah. Well, and a lot of people, you mentioned the hashtag, a lot of people know you from the yes. hashtag, yes. but you guys do so much more. Talk to us about some of the other things you do to incite change. Well, I've been a part of the movement for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm 34 years old. I joined it when I was 16, 17 years old. I joined a civil rights organization. I was, um, I was tired of just learning about racism and poverty. I wanted to do something about yeah. it. And so I joined the Bus Riders Union when I was um, 17 and a half. Wow. And I was there as a civil rights organization in Los Angeles fighting for better transit, environmental justice. And then I started my own organization before Black Lives Matter called Dignity and Power Now, where we fight for the rights of people who've been incarcerated inside LA County jails. Wow. Now, I have to ask you about, because it's something that we see, you mentioned the, the, the hashtag that mm -hmm. we see on social media, but then you also see hashtags like All Lives Matter yeah. and Blue mm -hmm. Lives Matter. Yes. What do you think about the people that have sort of almost hijacked the Black Lives Matter movement and made it their own? I think it's unfortunate because mm -hmm. uh, when you say All Lives Matter, of course they do. Right. Of course they do. What we're saying is Black Lives Matter too. Yes. Black Lives Matter isn't about exclusion, it's about focus. Mm -hmm. And Blue Lives Matter is clearly um, a defensive, you know, really police, police and law enforcement who are trying to um, demonize and minimize the Black Lives Matter movement by trying to put mm -hmm. their, you know, cause, uh, and really, uh, they're one of the most protected classes. Yeah. Um, and I think it's unfortunate when we see Blue Lives Matter. Yeah, and you make that very apparent in the book. So what do you hope readers will take away from your book? Yeah. I want readers to invest in black authors. There's so many amazing black authors. It's mm -hmm. black authors that helped me get through my many years of witnessing state violence. I read Octavia, Octavia Butler, Bell Hooks, Audre Lorde. But I also want readers to take action. Join something, join an organization. Mm, definitely, that's very true. And you, and you have been in many organizations. <laughs> I was looking through your bio. I was like, well, she's been just about in every. 
<laughs> like, like you said, you started when you were just a teen, yeah. but you never stopped. You continue. No. You sit on board. You yes. do as many activist issues. Yes. What is besides Black Lives Matter? What's the other number one issue that you're fighting for? Maternal health. Uh, mm. Black women, especially in the United States, have the highest maternal mortality and morbidity um, numbers. Uh, three to, we're three times, three to four times more likely to die during childbirth wow. and after um, the, Why that is first that year though? after. It's because of racism. It's because of lack neglect. Of care. It's because mm. of lack of care, um, and it's because um, for from the moment we're born, our bodies are neglected by the health system, wow. and so by the time we carry a child, it's actually really difficult on our bodies. And when we're in labor, in hospitals in particular, the lack of care that happens over and over again. I've met with so many families who lost their lost their wives, their sisters, their cousins wow. to maternal mortality. It's a big issue of mine. I'm a senior fellow at Moms Rising, and I've been working on the issue for the last year and a half. Mm. So what can a lay person like myself or Shannon mm. do to assist the movement? Um, if you are interested in anything, um, whether it be reproductive justice or racial justice, um, women's rights, um, f you can Google. It's mm. easy. You know, look up an organization that does that work. If you're interested in, in focusing on the law, you can look up, you know, things like the ACLU or mm -hmm. um, organizations in New York that are local that are really fighting to change policy and law. There's so many avenues. Mm -hmm. um, organizations like Color of Change. I mean, there's so many organizations that people can show up and, and maybe you can't physically go to a meeting, but maybe you can donate, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's important any way that you can to support some of the people that are doing the hardest work in this country to make American democracy true. Yeah, I think that's a good point because a lot of people think, oh, I don't want to go out there and march or yeah. I don't want to put my voice out there and be, you it's know, not the only way know. you can show up. Like you said, you can give them money and mm -hmm. no one even has to know about <laughs> it. You can still support the cause. <laughs> right. 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 Exactly. exactly. So exactly. what is the hope for this book? What do you hope that it's going to achieve? I hope that it gets everywhere. I mean, mm -hmm. it's we have, uh, we've published already in the U U.S. We just published in the U.K. on the mm -hmm. 25th. Um, the uh, uh, German press has picked it up, so it's published in, in Germany. And I hope that it debunks a lot of the myths of Black Lives Matter. Yes. Um, and I also hope that it gives people an entryway into what black life has looked like in this country, especially mm -hmm. for poor black people, mm -hmm. and how we can move into action. Yeah, well, um, it seems like a lot of action is still needed. Yeah. Do you think there's a greater need now for Black Lives Matter than when Trayvon was first shot? Absolutely, mm. absolutely, especially when we live under a government that has called it a law and order government, a government mm. that has um, called Black Lives Matter a terrorist organization and a government mm. that's trying to drag us back to the old days of the war on drugs and, and really, you know, Jim Crow era. Mm. Speaking of the government that has mm. called Black Lives Matter a terrorist organization, you have to show us your shirt. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, have to, camera right had to pick this up on camera. camera. Absolutely yeah. amazing. <laughs> when they call you a daughter or the survivor activist, mm -hmm. terrorist, and the ends of all those words come together to make terrorist. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. Is this something you designed yourself? I didn't. Um, it was actually uh, one of our team members that designed it. And we were trying to, outside of the book, how do we have a larger conversation? And this is the age of the t-shirt with words on it. So <laughs> we thought that this was an interesting idea. And I, th I love it. I think it's I amazing. Oh, we think the shirt's I mean, amazing. <laughs> Black Lives <laughs> Matter is amazing. <laughs> Right, well, oh, we're yeah. gorgeous. <laughs> thank you so gorgeous. Much. Thank you so much for having thank me. Thank you. Success we have to work. also talk about where yes. the book is available. Yes. For those of you that want to speak it up. Okay, so it's on Amazon, but it's mm -hmm. also in independent bookstores across New York. Mm -hmm. It's also at Barnes and Noble. Um, and you can pick it up Barnes and Noble inside Barnes and Noble, or you can go on bn.com. BN that right, is a so gorgeous sure book cover as well. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> we. When they call you a terrorist, pick it up now. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you for We will be right back with more Rise Entertainment 360. Oh, you're always great.